Wow. Uh, well, first of all, I, uh, I just want to welcome all of you here to the signing of this incredibly uh, important piece of legislation that has been a long time coming. Uh, I built my 2013 legislative agenda around one simple premise, and that premise was that each and every Oregonian deserves their shot at the American dream. And to me, that means a commitment to equity and opportunity, a commitment to jobs with upward mobility, a commitment to safe, secure communities where people have a sense of common purpose and, and caring and concern for, uh, for one another. And this, if, as I believe, uh, it is the promise of opportunity that lies at the heart of the American dream, the promise that hard work is rewarded, the promise that you can improve your life and leave your kids better off than you were, then public education is the vehicle through which that promise is most directly fulfilled today. This bill will help those young Oregonians whose families brought them here, who went to school here, who worked hard, who got good grades, who graduated from high school, exactly the kind of young people we want in our system of public universities. It will help them get their shot at the American dream. Tuition equity also helps us uh, get a return on this amazing investment we've already made in these young people through our K-12 through system and help build our economy by supporting uh, and nourishing the incredible productivity and skill and entrepreneurship of every single young person here uh, in the state of Oregon. So I am incredibly proud to join this amazing group of, of supporters uh, to celebrate this long overdue uh, policy change. And I, I want to take just a moment and thank a, a few of the many people who were very instrumental in making this happen. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, uh, President Peter Courtney, who has been working on this uh, since the early uh, part of the last decade. And without his persistent, uh, quiet, uh, and, but tenacious uh, advocacy, this bill probably would not be uh, before us today. Uh, I want to thank uh, the legislature for bringing this bill forward during this session and passing it with, uh, with really strong support. I want to thank uh, Laura Lanka, who's behind me, who brought this uh, to a former uh, principal at Woodburn High School. We contacted uh, the senator, I think, in 2002 to put this issue on his radar screen and continue to keep her shoulder to the wheel for all this time. All the students who came down here to testify and to advocate for your future. And we'll be hearing from one of those students, Edith Gomez, from uh, the University of Oregon here in, in just a moment. I also want to thank advocacy groups like uh, ACASA and PACUN uh, for their guidance and support and for their... Uh, And finally, but not, uh, not, not least, I want to thank all Oregonians from all over this state who basically recognize the fact that together we can and will make an, an investment and open a whole new set of opportunities for a whole new generation of young Oregonians and fulfill our promise to make sure they have an opportunity to fulfill the American dream for themselves and for their families. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Edith uh, Gomez. And, uh, Good morning, my name is Edith Gomez. I was born in Mexico and brought to Eugene, Oregon at the age of one. At the age of eight, I learned that I was undocumented and every year after that became more real to what that entailed. Never ending obstacles, shut doors to my career plans, which challenged my hope. There were those days that I just wanted to give up. I would lay in bed before going to sleep asking myself, what if all of this is for nothing? This is why the signing of this bill, to me, means the triumph of hope. Other students, like me, can look forward to going to college knowing that they will be able to afford it. I would like to recognize everyone who in the past 10 years has put their time and energy into tuition equity, as well as thank Governor Kitzhopper for being a supporter of tuition equity since day one and doing the right thing by signing this bill here today. Thank you. Yay. Uh, now I'd like to, to introduce the Senate President. I have known uh, Senator Courtney for a long time. Both of us have been around this building since early, <laughs> early, early 1980s. 
but uh, you know, Peter is uh, uh, is is really remarkable in this in the sense that uh, he has deep passions that uh, people don't often see. Uh, there's a number of things he really cares about. Mental health is obviously one of them, but tuition equity is another one. And uh, you know, he uh, pushed this bill up the hill, did not let it die, continued to advocate for it, and uh, really a, a tremendous victory for the people of this state, but also for for the Senate president. Uh, I don't uh, I struggle with uh, bill signings, but today is special, not for the obvious reason. I, I do want to thank the Chief Executive Officer of the State of Oregon, the Honorable John Albert Kitzhopper, MD. He really put his shoulder into this effort this year <laughs> and went, just gave it all. I also want to acknowledge, the, and he will speak soon, the Honorable uh, Michael Ellis Dembro who is chair of the committee that broke this thing loose and finally found a pathway to has, pass it out of the House because twice before we had gotten it through the Senate and we had struggled in the House. But he, in his uh, incredible talents, found a way in the House to make it happen. I also want to acknowledge the, the leader of the Senate Democrats is here, uh, Lan Rosenbaum, who's worked very hard, and my other compatriot who represents the district where this originated, Betty Kump. But now, this is all I want to say because this is, those who've played a major role, you know how you feel. Dear Peter, I'm writing to ask you to introduce legislation on our behalf to permit children born outside of the United States to pay in-state tuition at Oregon colleges and universities. What a bill like this would do is allow our college-ready students, regardless of their immigration status, the opportunity to get an education. That email was sent to me. This is the email that was sent to me at 12.07, November 26, 2002. And the person who sent it to me is Laura Lanka, the principal then of Woodburn High School. I didn't even not know. But you need, you need to know something else. The day that she was to testify and testify on Senate Bill 10 in 2002, she felt a severe pain in her leg. Laura Lanka soon thereafter learned that she had bone cancer. Ten years she has fought bone cancer. Just moments ago she was with me and her husband Peter Kolb right here. Tomorrow she'll go again to the Oregon Health Science University and hope to hear those words. Those words. It's in remission. So at the very time that she's thinking of the children, she is going to fight bone cancer. Ten years, she's had a struggle. Ten years, we've had a struggle. I cannot tell you how strongly I feel about Laura Lanka. Because, you know, I can't say the bill would not be here today if Peter and Laura hadn't met and started to talk on that hallway in Woodburn High School. But these kinds of legislation this big, they take a long, long time. They've got to start somewhere. There's got to be a first wagon. And that first wagon is Laura Lanka. And I'll tell you, Governor, when you sign this bill, one of those pens is going to Laura. And I just want you to remember, it's going to Laura. I'm just going to make it happen. You don't have to give it to me, but you'll give it one to Laura. And I just want to thank you. Laura and I, Laura and I, Laura and I have one regret. What about all those students that weren't made eligible during those 10 years? I will take that. That hurts me. It hurts me. Because they're out there. They had paid the price. They're who we are, we are them. But at least now, at least now my heart isn't totally broken. For today forward, for today forward, we're in this together. Thank you. Finally, I, it's my honor to introduce Representative Dembro. As, as Peter said, um, you know, we got this bill through the Senate a couple times and couldn't ever quite manage to get it to the House of Representatives. And Representative Dembro, uh, was truly remarkable in his tenacity, his commitment to this issue, his passion about this issue, but also his skill in actually putting the politics together uh, to, uh, to get this bill. So uh, it's uh, another great victory for, uh, for another great representative. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Governor. Oh, it's so great to see all these young people here and not so young people you know, as well. <laughs> This is, this is a sweet, sweet moment, a sweet, sweet day. In a few minutes, uh, the governor is going to take your dream, he's going to take our dream, and he's going to sign it into law. 
Think about that. Taking a dream and signing it into law. Think about what it took to get here. It's been so arduous, so many frustrating moments, moments of hope punctuated by long stretches of despair. And yet through it all, there are many people in this room who remained resolute, who kept dreaming. Today is your day, and you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to call out individuals. I can't possibly pay tribute to all the individuals and all the organizations that have stuck with us for so many years. But I do want to call out and pay special tribute to the Oregon Student Association. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And particularly that remarkable subset, the Oregon Students of Color Coalition. Oh, <laughs> uh, And of course, uh, you know, I need to pay tribute to Kausa and Pekun and the Oregon Dreamers, uh, those young people who had the courage to come out of the shadows and show us all what they're made of, show us why we need to invest in them. And to those legislators who've helped us get over this finish line at last, I need to pay special tribute to Frank Morse. Uh, I wish Frank were here today. Uh, he and Dave Nelson, such champions. Uh, Chuck Thompson in the Senate as well. Bob Jensen in the House. Ben Cannon, who must be here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark Hass, Chris Harker, uh, John Huffman, uh, Mark Johnson, our new representatives, Joe Gallegos, Jessica Vega-Peterson. Vega um, but of course, first of all, we have to pay tribute to the good Senate president, mm -hmm. yeah. who is, as you heard, he was the first at the table and the last one to leave the table. But he left the table with this great dessert on it, you know, for us. <laughs> Uh, he had brought the dream of access to higher education to fruition at last. This dream of education, you know, education is all about dreaming. It's about turning dreams into reality. A student's dreams, a teacher's dreams, a family's dreams, a community's dreams, Oregon's dreams. This year, the Oregon legislature has at long last provided a pathway to success for dreamers today and for dreamers tomorrow. It makes me so proud to be a legislator, so proud to be an Oregonian. Governor, thank you for your steadfast support of this issue and for signing this bill today. And thanks to everyone who brought us to this sweet, historic moment today. Thank you. Friends, a dream has become a reality. Yeah.